quiet. This thing on, we good? Cool. New video. Um, this video, we're going to talk about a question that I was asked by somebody in the comment section on a previous video, which was, how do you maintain muscle, if not gain muscle, while on a cut with a high body fat percentage? So let's say you're overweight or you want to cut down on fat, but you want to maintain the muscle, keep the muscle and not lose that as well as you're cutting down on your fat or your weight, as people call it. Well, let's start off with this, right? You have to have a mental paradigm shift of what the difference between weight loss and fat loss is. And I've said this on previous videos. There's a difference between the two. You can have two people at 200 pounds and those people literally look completely different. So look at somebody who is 200 pounds here, 200 pounds here. This person can look way better than this person, even though they weigh the same. And it's because of their body composition. And body composition is everything that goes into your total weight, right? So if person here looks better than person here and they're both 200 pounds, this person can have a higher muscle mass uh, percentage compared to fat loss percentage. So that ratio um, versus this person who has a higher body fat percentage than a, and a lower muscle mass percentage. And you can see the look being different on both sides. This is why when you look at somebody who did Ozempic or some glutide, the BS that they have you inject, like they all look weird when they get off of it. They just don't look that healthy. They just look kind of like frail and just super skinny. Like it's not a good approach, I believe, to like fat loss, right? Like they, they get weight loss, but they, they may get skinny fat, right? Because they just lost weight. You don't know what kind of weight they lost. So that's number one. That's a big paradigm shift. Once you shift in that angle, you're on, you're in the right direction. The next one is your, your caloric intake. So to lose fat is literally this. You expend more calories than you take in. So you need to be in a caloric deficit if you want to lose fat. This is well known within the scientific dork community. <laughs> uh, but in the bro size community, we believe the same thing, right? Where it's like um, you have to be in a caloric deficit to actually lose fat. So the way I like to look at it, I keep it simple. You don't want to be in too much of a caloric deficit. So um, find your maintenance calories. We're not going to talk about how you calculate it on here because you don't need to go on Google and type in maintenance um, calorie calculator and literally you'll find something. I do this all the time. Um, it'll tell you, put your height, your weight, your age, your activity levels, all that. It'll tell you how many calories you need to maintain where you're currently at. Um, and then from there, you want to be at a 300 to 500 caloric deficit. Um, that is important for you to be able to actually start losing fat. And some people are like, well, I want to lose fat faster, so I'm going to drop that even more to a thousand calorie deficit. I think that's the wrong idea. Um, that's the wrong way to go about it. Because the minute you start dropping it even more, you start to cut down on the macros that you need. You need a certain amount of macros, carbohydrates, fats, proteins in total. You need a certain amount that add up to the amount of calories that you consume. Think about it. For every gram of carbs is six calories. For every gram of protein is six calories. For every gram of fat is nine calories. You need a combination of these to then add up to the amount of calories that you consume. So if you have a certain macro that you need to obtain, a certain amount of grams that you need per macronutrient, your caloric intake has to be a certain amount for you to maintain that balance, right? So you don't wanna cut down too much. That's why you may see someone that's overweight say, I'm just gonna stop eating or I'm only gonna eat salads or like a small meal every day. Like you're gonna see that they don't actually lose weight. They're gonna stay the same. If not, they're gonna get worse. Their metabolism's gonna slow down. And you know, they're just gonna feel bad because they don't have the macronutrients. So caloric deficit, 300 to 500 calories less than your maintenance. Uh, and the third, I believe we're on the third, is prioritizing protein when we talk about macros, right? So you want to maintain, if not gain muscle during a cut. Well, you want to make sure that you have enough protein that you're consuming to allow for your muscles to recover after they've been broken down or, or have these micro tears from you lifting because the process of lifting causes micro tears in your muscle. And when your muscle breaks down, it needs the amino acids. It needs 
the protein specifically, right? Complete protein profile uh, or amino acid profile to be able to recover, right? So if you're not consuming enough of this, you're not going to recover properly and your muscles are going to continue to break down and you're going to start losing muscle. So you want to make sure that your, your protein intake is solid. And my rule of thumb, and I like to keep this simple, I know it's at 1.1 kg, I don't even think about that. One gram of protein per lean muscle mass, not one gram of protein per body for per pound of body weight, because now you're factoring your water rate, water weight, you're factoring in um, the weight that you have in fat. You want to make sure that you take it just for your lean muscle mass, because that is how much protein you need to maintain that right at a bare minimum, if not grow it as well. Right. If you eat more protein, of course. So make sure you're prioritizing protein. And protein actually allows for you to be satiated. So you won't overeat on carbs um, when you go eat somewhere. So you won't have to worry about eating too many calories. And here's the thing, protein and carbs, it's the same, it's the same caloric intake, right? Six, six calories, six calories. Now, carbs are really good because they give you energy, right? They help you with your glycogen stores. They're really, really good for you, especially complex carbs. Make sure you focus on complex carbs. That way you're not just eating simple carbs all the time, which sometimes may not be able to digest very well, right? So you're looking at sugars, you're looking at, you know, even white rice can be a, a simple carb. Um, things that just aren't, aren't going to be able to break down for energy, for a long, sustaining last of energy. Simple carbs are really good for a short energy burst. That's why, like, I can eat a candy bar before I work out and feel a pump, feel really good, because I have that quick energy burst and I have that quick glycogen um, Feel, right, so that is when it comes to proteins, um, carbs as well. You want complex carbs. Fats are really important. I know a lot of people who are not educated will say, "I don't want to eat fats because I don't want to get fat." That's not true. The way that fat gain happens, why people get fat, is because they have a caloric um, surplus, not a deficit. They're in a caloric surplus to where they're eating way more calories than they're expending. Right. Not even breaking even, not even eating enough calories to where they expend all those calories and they go back. They're eating way more. They're shooting way over. And usually it's because they overdo it on carbs. You're not going to overdo it on protein because you literally can't. You're not going to want to eat anymore. So they just eat a ton of carbs. Right. And they just keep eating and carbs burn fat. So like you're just consistently eating, 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 eating. And they just sit there and they're not being used for energy. And when your body has something that is like calories that are coming in that are not being expended, it stores it as fat in different areas of your body. And obviously your genetics basically dictate where the fat is being stored in your body. It could be the stomach area, lower back area, the arms, the legs, the butt, like whatever, wherever you store fat, right? Um, that's where your body will store. So make sure that you are um, not in a caloric surplus too much. You should be in a caloric surplus if you're bulking per se, but you're not, you're really trying to cut. So you should be in a, a caloric deficit um, and make sure that you are um, consuming the enough fats within the macros that are recommended for you. Um, again, I don't know your situation specifically, I'm speaking in broad terms right now. Um, you need to make sure that the fats that you're eating are enough for your body to sustain and fats can be used as long lasting energy. Um, they're not going to make you fat, especially if it's like omega-3 fatty acids, like things from avocados, nuts, like all of these things, olive oil. These are really good fats for you and your body can use it um, efficiently to help you achieve your goals, right? And to allow for you to feel good. Um, make sure you're eating an adequate amount of protein and make sure that the carbs that you're eating are primarily complex carbs um, and you're eating enough of those. And if you follow this, you literally will not lose muscle when you're cutting. Like I cut down from, I believe 11% body fat, or 10 to 11% body fat, all the way down to 5% body fat for my first bodybuilding show. I didn't lose a single like ounce of muscle. I literally had everything. If not, I built more muscle and I looked bigger. Right. The leaner you get, the bigger you look because your muscles pop out more. So when you're cutting, follow these things. Um, this, these, I like to give frameworks. I'm not going to give specific tips and tricks because I believe that when you understand the framework, you can apply it to what you need. And then if you need specific directions, you reach out to someone like me to help get you specifically to your goals. Right. So these tips are very important if you want to make sure that you are not losing muscle 
you're actually gaining, if not maintaining muscle on a cut um, while you have higher body fat percentage, right? So hope this video was informative. Um, keep asking questions of what you need. I love answering these questions. I've had great experiences dealing with this for myself, um, for my clients, for, for, all, for any of these types of questions. So as you can see, this was off the cuff. I don't need a script. I don't need anything. This is purely off of experience. So continue to ask away. I'll catch you guys in, on the next video. Make sure you comment, subscribe, like, share it with friends that need this. I'll catch y'all on the next video.